A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter nine. The church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace, and was built up. Living in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. Now, as Peter went here and there among all the believers, he came down also to the saints living in Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas, who had been bedridden for eight years, for he was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up. And make your bed. And immediately, he got up. And all the residents of Lida and Sharon saw him, and turned to the Lord. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple, whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, "Please come to us without delay." So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, "Tabitha, get up." Then, she opened her eyes, and seeing her, she sat up. He gave her his hand, and helped her up. Then, calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa. And many believed in the Lord. Today's first reading from the Acts of the Apostles tells us how Saint Peter healed Aeneas, a man who had been paralyzed for eight years, and revived Dorcas, a faithful Christian woman who had become ill and died subsequently. As Jesus had promised to his disciples, they received the power to heal and revive. Through their deeds of power, more and more people turned to Christ, and the first communities of Christians grew rapidly. We may wonder why our bishops, priests, and deacons of our times. Do not cause miraculous healings and revivals as often as the apostles did. Did they not receive the power to heal? In our times, the healing power has been transferred to medical workers. But wouldn't it be so beneficial if the world can see miraculous healings, so that? Many people come and join the church and receive the gift of salvation. Why is God not so generous as before? Why are our clergy so powerless? Wasn't it one of the main ministries of Jesus to heal the sick? Every time I come back from grocery shopping. Especially from major distribution centers, I see I am a part of the problem, not of the solution. I create or pay for the creation of harmful wastes, all those wrappings and containers. 
Many of my cookware in the rectory is not safe. Potentially carcinogenic. A vast number of household products, building materials, clothes, you name it, emit environmental hormones. I have been poisoning myself and others by my choices and by my dollars. Then do I expect I can heal others? Shouldn't I stop killing first? Yes, it is almost unavoidable in our times not to choose this harmful lifestyle. But it is still true. I am a part of the problem. It would be contradictory and hypocritic for me to heal a cancer patient while I still buy potentially carcinogenic products. That's probably why God does not give me the power to heal. Unless I try to heal myself and stop harming others, God will not grant me the power to heal others. Only then I might be hoping to see an increase in new converts.